pound and pound and pound in this guy's head. It's better but to be a warrior in a garden yep. than a gardener in a war. If you did what you did on the street, you'd be arrested, right? And it's just nice to be nice. That, that surprises me, I must admit. So my name is Ingrid Marsh, I'm based in London, and I'm here at MMA On Point to talk about this sport you call martial arts something, MMA, martial something or another, mixed martial arts. And questioning why, why anybody wants to do this? Well, you can't be a very nice person, can you? This is what you do for a living. I don't expect that you have a good heart. So I'm imagining someone who's probably okay on the outside, but that wouldn't be real, would it? Because inside you batter people for a living. Why do you want to do that with your life? And to me, like, these boxes just your feet. Here, you're just like, get in there, shoot arms, legs, head. It's like, there's no boundaries, there's no rules. Let's just kill you. Yo, if you didn't know and have been living under Dana White's biceps, Fight Front is sponsored by Jocko Fuel. You get 10% off when using the code MMA on point, and you get the ultimate natural energy boost with it. Stick around to the end of the video to find out more. I'm good. Nathaniel, How are you? You don't mind doing this with me, it's amazing. No, no, well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I too. bet I'm not what you expected. <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> you're nice. <laughs> Although I've watched something, I could look at a couple of seconds Seems of your videos. Like just, just a couple of seconds of what yeah. I could do. And I was like, oh, Hopefully, good. the good stuff. <laughs> me, me what, we, what we both call good might be different, though. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's the thing, isn't it? My name's Nathaniel Wood, and I'm a current UFC featherweight fighter. Um, I've done martial arts since I was about 16 now, and it's finally, you know, I'm able to make a living out of it. So, this is my, my bread and butter, and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying every minute of it. I started training when I was about 16, properly, but when I was around 10, 11, I was doing kickboxing for a couple of years, um, which I gave up to then pursue football, soccer. Um, but yeah, I've always been a very active kid and you know, very energetic, so I've just always wanted to do uh, martial arts or football, you know, become, kind of become an athlete you know, ever since I was young. Um, and yeah, finally we're here. I'd say I'm a very family man, um, you know, I don't, do much other than train, go out for food with my, uh, my fam family and fiance and my friends. Um, I don't drink a lot, you know, I don't party a lot. I'm, I'm not a big drinker. I don't like the taste of alcohol. Other than that, you'll see me in the coffee shop or a restaurant, you know, when I can actually afford to eat during my fight camps and um, walking my dog. That's about it, really. I describe myself as a free spirit. So someone who generally, usually appreciates difference. I love nature, so I call myself a, a soul girl. Um, a bit woo-woo, some would describe me, that I'm not very real. Um, I need to get with life. But I kind of like my little fantasy world, you know? It always keeps a smile on my face. I love another fighter. I love dancing. I'm a big old dancer. I'm the first one on the dance floor. First on the dance floor, hands in the air like I just don't care. And the last to leave. You know, whenever I do like a, a personal training with, uh, session with someone, you know, I try to say to them, imagine like rhythm in dancing. It's a similar sort of aspect. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to move your feet. You've got to be able to move your feet with your hands differently. Um, so I definitely think that the two kind of cross over. You know, if you're a good dancer, I think that would help with fighting. And, you know, I'd like to think if you're an athletic fighter, I'd I think I'd be able to pick up some dance moves quite easily. I struggled to see the connection. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I think it's all about rhythm and uh, finding your beat, you know, and I think that's like fighting. So when I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm teaching someone or calling someone, I'll always tell them to find that rhythm. Um, as they say, rhythm is a dancer, right? That, that surprises me, I must admit. Okay. I did see one bit of rhythm, actually, yeah. when I was watching the... Um, doing a bit of research, mm -hmm. and he was like, sort of like pounding, 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 pounding this guy's head. Yeah. I suppose that could be rhythmic. No, no, for me it's more on the striking. You know, it takes two to tango, so depending on what my opponent will do, yeah. will depend on what footwork I may do. You know, if he comes in a certain direction, I have to move off in a certain direction. You have to be able to pivot. You know, you have to be able to find that rhythm. Oh, wow. um, whereas if you get two amateur guys, then maybe it's just a bit crazy. No right. one knows what they're doing. But once you get to a certain skill level, you know, it's kind of, um, I'd say imagine like fencing, two fences, you know, how they would move their feet in yeah, and yeah, you'd yeah. move off. It's yeah, similar, it on fencing, similar sort of thing like that. Yeah. Um, but that's when you get to a higher level. Right. The higher level you are, the more kind of rhythm you would There's need. There's a rhythm there. Yes, whereas to you, you might look at it as, oh, it's just a bit chaotic. Yeah, but, but if you see a high level fighter versus, uh, two, two high level fighters, sorry, versus two amateur kind of fighters, there, yeah. there is a, a big difference. Okay, right, okay. My goal has always been to use my platform to help people in the world. 
So I'm an ambassador for the Amelia May Foundation, which is a charity for kids with a rare form of cancer. Um, I'm an ambassador for Jigsaw For You, which is a charity for kids that have had tough upbringings, um, or they might be going through some stuff at the moment with um, parents maybe passing away or going through a divorce, things like that. I'm a member of the Bowel Disease Charity. Um, that's a friend of mine, so we, I went along to help him try and raise awareness for it. And also one of my sponsors, uh, Roofing Firm, they have their own charity organisation, which is 13 different charities, but they mainly focus on kids um, you know, that, are, that are dying. Um, so my plan is to try and raise as much as I can for them, uh, whether it's through you know, auctioning off memorabilia or just helping raise awareness. Um, Hopefully, there'll be a day where I can actually maybe go to like the hospitals dressed up as a superhero, that sort of stuff, just to try and you know put a smile on their face. I just want to do good in the world. You know, we're all going to die eventually. I'm, I'm religious, so I believe that we're going to go somewhere when we die. And I'd like to think that the man upstairs is going to be there thinking, you know, this guy's done a lot of good in the world. I want to make my family proud. Um, and it's just nice to be nice. I try to encourage people to live very much a soulful life. So I do a lot of volunteering like, with like children at Saturday school and that kind of thing. But I kind of feel that my um, charitability happens on a day-to-day -day basis where I encourage people to, to invest in their soul, their God that's within. So that's the other thing that differs between me and most religions. I believe in the God outside and the God within yourself. Mm -hmm. I love when you said you did a lot around children. Mm -hmm. Because um, for me, that is where the beauty is. And we, if we, we could only go back to those days, and it'd be a much more beautiful world. I remember working with someone, and their dog died. And I thought, crikey, dog died? Like, <laughs> why are you acting like that? So I didn't get it. But then I acquired a cat, and I thought, you can actually love an animal. And I actually think that animals and myself, we're actually, I think, we're on a similar vibration frequency. So I've grown to kind of love and connect mm. with them. The dog I grew up with just passed away about three months ago, which is the worst day of my life, honestly. Yeah. I don't think anything's oh. hurt as much as that. And I could see it from my dad as well, like we were, we're in bits, do you know what I mean? And it, and it took a few days at least to just kind of, sounds cheesy, just stop crying. Do you know what I mean? It really, really did, uh, yeah, it did hurt that one. Um, now, me and my fiance have got a Belgian Shepherd and he's my best friend, you know, it sounds silly because he's, he's an animal, he's a dog, but I see it way more than that, you know, and I just wish that people were like dogs. Um, and yeah, you know, the amount of enjoyment that I get from, from just being with him, I guess what it's like having kids, you know, you just constantly want to be sharing them with the world. On Facebook once I saw, uh, it was like a big cartoonized picture and it was everything reversed. So it was animals eating humans and there was two budgies sitting reading a paper and then the humans were in a cage. Wow. And if you flip it like that, oh, that threw me off. You know, that yeah, messed my head. Yeah, I was yeah. like, <laughs> how is this a thing? And even like, I look at a goldfish and I'm like, how is a goldfish just stuck in a bowl? That's it, that's its life. Yeah. How is this allowed? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm surprised actually, if I'm going to be really mm, honest, mm. there's this beauty <laughs> behind you, really. Mm. I'm surprised by that, but keeping it real. I could have this totally wrong. I'm not a sporty person like that. But to me, when I think of like Taekwondo, that kind of thing, it just feels like more like defence. But I don't see that. I'm surprised this came under martial arts. I, I struggle with that in my head. How it's actually called so a sport. This is all martial arts put into one. So it's almost like saying which martial art would win. So, you know, if your son was training Taekwondo and a bully on the street who was a boxer came up, you know, which martial arts the better. So that's how I'd say it started, you know. Right. People wanted to say, what martial art would win if they were all put in together? It's in a way, it's like there's no rules, but there are a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. um, so we get to kind of decide who the best martial artist is, whether you train in Muay Thai, boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling. Okay. And now, you know, it's an actual mixed martial but arts. But I watched stuff. a video on the way here, mm -hmm. s three seconds of it, where he was like thumping this guy in the head quite mm -hmm. viciously. Which one of the martial arts is that one? So that would be you just your ground and pound finishing. The keys to winning is a knockout if you get a KO, which you know is no different from karate, boxing, kickboxing, taekwondo. Mm -hmm. um, a submission, which is your jiu-jitsu, so that's where the guy is going to tap out. Or you get a technical knockout, so it's where, say I've, I've hit the guy, he's not knocked out, mm -hmm. but then you have to follow up until the ref says, right, enough's enough. So I've had fights before where I'm dazed out of my head. The guy is still hitting me, and I've recovered because I'm still in the fight. But if I wasn't in the fight and the guy is just hitting me and I'm not defending, that's when the ref would then step in. 
And that's what you probably saw. You saw the ground and pound, which is a guy trying to get the finish, which of course is never going to look nice from, if you just see just that, mm. it's like, oh God, what's he, what's he doing? He's hitting a man that you know, can't defend himself. But then that's where it's the ref's job to then step in, stop the fight before obviously he gets too hurt. And, and too hurt is subjective, really, I guess. It's, it's when the guy stops defending himself. So, you know, if uh, I had a fight where I'm very dazed, you know, I, w I wasn't sure what was going on, but I was still able to be in the fight and survive. If the guy had knocked me out to the point where I'm no longer defending myself, that's when the ref would stop so in you and say... So when you say be in the fight, sorry if I'm taking this... When you say be in the fight, does that you just being able to do I that? I no, I still know what's going on. So how so. can you, he can't tell that, the ref can't tell that, you know. No, so there have been times where refs have stepped in far too early. I've had it myself, where... To me, they're not stepping in early no, no, enough. So <laughs> in, my, in this fight, this was against John Dodds in the UFC, yeah. he caught me with a shot, dropped me, which meant I went to the floor. Mm -hmm. As I was getting up, he came in and was throwing his shots like what you would have seen, mm -hmm. and I was still in the fight, I was still getting up. As I got up to it turn around... Getting up or stumbling up? I'm, I'm getting up with him jumping on me. None of the shots that he followed up with are actually doing any damage. Right. But they obviously look to the ref like, ooh, it's a bit nasty. The ref stepped in, that's the fight over. I'm looking at the ref going, no, like, come on, I'm fine. So you're, you're all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. And yeah, there's also been times where you see fights where you're thinking, ref, stop this fight, and they haven't stopped it. Um, in my fight, which we could actually probably show you, against Josh Reed, he's smashing me all over the place for the first two minutes. Luckily, the ref, Mark Goddard, could see that I was still defending myself, could see that I was still in the fight, and he didn't stop it. I then turned it around and, and won my fight. And you were pleased by that, that he, was, that he didn't Oh, stop I'm glad it. he didn't stop it, because <laughs> I then won my fight, yeah. which led me to be signed by the UFC and completely changed my life. Oh, right. Whereas if he had stepped in, I would still be earning zero money. I wouldn't be able to have moved out. I wouldn't be able to buy the nice things. I wouldn't be able to be getting married next year. You know, I wouldn't be able to afford any of it. My whole life would have been completely changed if he had stepped in. Um, oh so I thank God he, he didn't. And I wish, I wish he had. I mean, I, don't, I want you to have a lovely yep. life, my darling, but I just want, don't want you to be hurt. Yeah, no, of course. And that's exactly what my mum says. Um, but my mum's point of view is that she also knew that me being on a building site, which I was doing when I was 16, happy it was, I wasn't happy. Dreading to go work every day. Mm. And honestly, the amount of injuries I've got at work is way worse than my martial arts Where was this now? You skip a yeah. jet rig? I don't even, I've probably had 30 fights, two broken noses, one concussion. Well, I wish nothing um, else happened No, to thank you. you. Whereas, you know, I know people in rugby, far more injuries. Boxing, there are far more head traumas, you know, because it's a lot of constant punching to the head. Whereas where we add grappling and wrestling and other sort of things, you know, we get a lot of superficial damage, like cuts, but they look bad, but they're not really. You know, a couple of stitches later, we're absolutely fine. Come on now, I've seen some you lose, We lose your good pictures. looks, but, you know, we're, uh, <laughs> I think we're a lot healthier because, you know, to me, a guy that's in an office all day, eating crap food all day, not exercising, going home, I don't think he's healthy. You know, me, I'm staying active every day, I'm eating clean, I have to eat healthy because that's the job I'm in. I'm, you know, I'm always hydrated, I'm always exercising. Mm -hmm. I do take some damage, you know, I'm definitely not going to have a modelling career. Um, but other than that, touch wood, I'm, I'm healthy and, and happy. You can ask anyone in the world probably that suffers with mental health, they'll probably tell you that exercise is a, a key thing that they like to include. You then get in battered. Where's the mental health in, in that? that? So obviously the, the plan is to not get battered. You know? <laughs> a lot of our training is don't get hit. That's always the rule, you know, hit but and don't get hit. you are going to get hit. Don't no, you? of course, that is all part of it. Let's, let's use rugby as an example. You know, no one wants to play rugby and get concussion get serious neck injuries, anything like that at all, but stuff like that does occur. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in our sport, of course, people do get hurt. It's very, very, there's barely, I don't know the scientific thing, I think there's only ever been a couple of deaths in the sport, which if you compare to every other sport in the world, we're still at one of the lowest. But I mean, it can hardly, I'm struggling to, and I hear what you're saying, that there's mm -hmm. less injury in football and rugby and blah, blah, blah. But they're not cruel, are they? This is cruel. Why is it cool? You may not look at it this way. <laughs> yeah. It's play fighting. <laughs> it is. The reason why I say that oh, is because on, <laughs> there's rules. There's a referee. Let's just make up a character. Let's say Dave works in the office. Yeah. And on the weekend, he likes to get drunk and go out fighting. You know, he could have two guys trying to attack him. There's no rules out in the street. And we live in a very violent world, you know. That is a fight. To me, this is the play fight because the ref's going to stop it. 
there's a lot of rules involved. There's a lot of medical checks before brain scans. You know, you can can't do this. Um, so to me, it's very rough play fighting, of course. If if you did what you did on the street, you'd be arrested, right? Of well, anyone would. Yeah. You know, because you can't it's go it's around. It's yeah, yeah, and I'm not a violent. Well. So why person. is it suddenly now legal? The moment we've got a couple of people, are we going to cover up? Because they don't look too great. Would you say the same thing with boxing as well then? Why are you going into a ring? Like, I just think that life, mm. like as a human being, we're just the most beautiful creatures, thing that has ever mm. been made. I don't get that. Why do you want to do that to yourself? Say me versus my opponent. I want to win. I want to beat you. I don't want to hurt you. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. me and my opponents, we've always had a lot of respect. And after you, it's very rare where you'll see guys after the fight still hating each other. And going back to the play fighting, I kind yeah, of explain to people that it's like, to me, it's like paintballing. In paintballing, I have to shoot you, you have yeah. to shoot me, but I don't actually want to shoot you and hurt you, but it hurts. We're just pretending, we're playing. And to me, that's the same thing of fighting. You know, People will say we're warriors and we're gladiators, but we're not fighting to the death. You know, We're fighting in a very controlled environment, we're fighting with referees, and there's many times where you'll see a referee who hasn't stepped in and the, the guy's looking at the ref to say, are you gonna stop this fight? Because we don't want each other to get hurt. Right. You know, I don't think there'll ever be a fighter that will actually say, yeah. Maybe you're one of the nice ones, Nathaniel. I think that... <laughs> maybe, maybe. But I honestly can tell you, I don't, I've never met someone who's actually wanted to hurt their opponent to the point where but the fight's over and there's right. damage still done. Do you know what I mean? But surely you must have to have that in your heart to want... Because the fact that I can't watch it, so there must be an, an energy I'm picking up from that, that to me it's like it's like blood and gore and bloodthirsty and like to me is that people have lost this they've lost themselves in this when i watch uh, a mixed martial arts fight i see two very trained martial artists going at it right whereas to you you probably see two barbaric <laughs> fighters you know there are vicious fighters isn't there who do aim to of course break limbs oh of course there's like always that. there's always bad people in, in the world so what percentage would you say are nice ones like you or like <laughs> Honestly, or if you came to animals. our if if you came to our gym, you would say 100% of our gym are nice people. <laughs> Is your mum able to watch you fight? She said, "Look, as long as you're happy and doing what you love, um, she obviously loves it when I win. But you know, she ideally doesn't want to watch it until she knows the result. But that's more because she knows how gutted I am if I lose and how much work I put in. Um, whereas she's never really worried about me getting hurt because she knows how hard I train." You taking two human beings, a bit like cockfighters mm -hmm. back in the day, and we're putting them in a cage to fight, to, 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 to mm -hmm. bladder that other person. But we're not forcing them. We're not forcing no. them. No one's ever said to me, get in there get and fight. There. I mean, is there a bit of ego in there, do you think, as well? And my friends will say to people, oh yeah, no, it's a UFC fight and all this, and I cringe. Yeah, I find I like, it. Yeah, I hear I'm like, oh, stop it, you know, I don't want to know. If anyone says to me, oh, can you fight? I'm like, Oh, a little bit. I struggle to think that this is not in your mind. I want to blatter you. I want to... Because you do, haven't you? That, you won't win otherwise. So unless you batter that me person now, in a cage. At the point that I'm at, I, I want to walk through my opponent to bring back money for my family. You know, I take more back more money at home to do good with. Um, and I guess that's no different for my opponent. You know, he's got a family to go home to give money to and... Um, I'm sure every other fighter on the planet doesn't want to go back to a building job or go back to the office. You know, for me, that was hell. You know, I really didn't enjoy no, and it. And I hear that. There's that you know, I'm all for one living their best life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I just think there's money and there's money, you know. And, and my first thing before meeting you <laughs> was like, mm -hmm. you know, quite like, is your mum proud of you? Like, mm. you know, what did you do today, Dan? I blattered this person. No. How was your day at the office? Oh, I battered this person. No, that, that really ever <laughs> happened. Right then. So put it this way, <laughs> I've never beaten an opponent and heard that they've gone away with real damage. It would break my heart if that happened, and it never has. If you go back into like caveman, caveman days, day. yeah, which obviously we're not, you know, yeah. we're not, and we're not, we're not doing that now. Um, but to a certain extent, this is, I guess, the the most closest thing to that. Mm. You know, where if you're frustrated, you can go to the gym, you can take it out on the bag, you can take it out in your fight. This is what I think is quite like primitive. <laughs> Almost. And like, we've evolved, right? And we're settling arguments through fighting. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, like say, caveman days. That's how mm -hmm. I see it. Mm -hmm. so, well, have we not evolved from, from that? So me personally, I, I've never fought on the street. For me, I just love the competitive nature. You know, I love being an athlete. And when I finished school and I was 16, 
I thought, I really just want to be an athlete. I don't want to be doing building anymore. You know, yeah. that's what I was doing. I, I, I had nothing else kind of thing. You know, I didn't want to work in an office. Yeah, and I hear that. And I thought, I want to be an athlete. Mm. And at the time, I was just a fan of the UFC. And I thought, what sports can you actually go into at this age and make a career out of? And I thought, the UFC champions today aren't young guys. You know, this is a new sport up and coming. I'm in control here, so I know how dedicated I am. If I put the hours and the work in, I know that I can reach the top. This is almost my problem with it, is that mm. all the other uh, martial arts that you described, you know, that they're, they're one thing. So I get it, mm. you know. Pops. <laughs> Here it's just like a free-for-all. Like, <laughs> kick, punch, tear. Mm. And I guess that's no difference from me looking at dancing. I might think, what's going on here? But then you can appreciate what they're doing yeah. if you know what you're looking at. And that's me that usually, sense. you see, like, because I really appreciate difference. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I really feel I'm one of those persons who can stick in any world. And although it's not me, I can get it. But I'm struggling with this one. Okay. Yeah, sorry. and I will say it's not <laughs> for like, everyone. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> for me. I'm not here trying to convince you to become no, the next biggest not. fan. No, of course um, not. But the more you'd watch it, of course, the more you'd be able to appreciate and go, okay, I see what you're doing here. So if you see me go and do a Brazilian jiu-jitsu session, you'll think these two guys are just hugging each other on the floor. Right. You know. Well, I'm, I'm looking they, forward to taking another peep at it. So if I can see some yeah, dancing going you'll, on, you'll like think you they're just cuddling. But then <laughs> yeah. what you'll realise is what we're actually doing is a human game of chess. You know, he makes his move, I make mine. Um, and obviously the more you know about the sport, I guess the more moves you're unlocking and you're able to see. Because I would know now if I watch two guys going out and what they're doing, whereas you wouldn't. Getting in your car, you know there's risks involved. You know that you could drive down the road and... That's different, Nathaniel. Why? Because it's like they get in the car, drive. here you are. They don't go into the car to get mm. killed, no, But I'm saying within they? risks. Yeah, but but no, neither no. do I, I don't go into a fight to get killed. No, but you go in there Knowing that, it's, it's, it's ugly, not beautiful. I can see that. I, I, I <laughs> disagree to a certain extent. So um, you look at that and you think, this is beautiful. When I see two trained martial artists doing what they're trained to do, yes. You think this is beautiful? Do I see someone getting hurt beautiful? No, <laughs> far from it. But I can appreciate the skill set and especially the, the respect, the humbleness, you know, things like that that have been shown. I love watching the kids' class. You know, when I see uh, training, the kids showing, the amount of respect you see coming off these kids to each other. Do you think we're glorifying, like, brutality? No. No? No, no. I had a kid the other day, it broke, broke my heart, he's about eight, and he said to me, uh, Nath, he said, I, I, I only come here because I want to be like you, you're an inspiration oh. to me. And that melted my heart. Um, <laughs> oh, that's very sweet, but... Crikey. But, you know, in doing the training, he's learning to respect, to be humble. How does a kid differentiate between this is crazy? I mean, a kid cannot be disciplined like mm. you're, you are disciplined. Oh, and they, you know, like, they will. this is art and that's mm. fighting. You can do that. It's better to be a warrior in a garden yeah. than a gardener in a war. Oh, I'll have to think about that one. Right. It'll take a long time. So for me, when yeah. I, I don't have kids yet. Yeah. When I have kids, my nightmare would be if my kid come home to me one day and said, Dad, I got beaten up today by a load of bullies. Mm. I say, well, why? What happened? And he says, because I didn't know how to defend myself. Mm -hmm. That break my heart. Because I think a key life skill everyone should be taught is how to defend themselves. Mm. You know, I'm not saying everyone should be taught to be a martial artist and fight and compete. Mm. Growing up, you need to go to school. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to defend yourself. Would you it surprise you to hear that I've never had a fight in my life? That's good. You're always shocked by yeah, that. I've never had a fight in my life outside of training. Oh, really? Yep. So then there's so much that I need there. My son's never had a fight. Yeah, so but is then... There, is there such a big... You're just saying... I it, like it, it, to think now that if I go out, I have the ability to protect my family, other people, whereas I think these people that aren't trained and they go out on the streets, they have drinks or they have all this frustration they've built up in the office in a week and they just go crazy, you know, and I think that's why we live in quite a violent world. Because you see the audience as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they look a bit crazy and all, don't they? They're more crazy than the fight. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Utter nutters. Oh, it's bulging, I'd, bloodthirsty. I don't know they've, anyone, lost, they've lost their centre. Yeah, no. Nah, I don't <laughs> know anyone personally who trains and competes in mixed martial arts who has ever gone out and been arrested for fighting. And I honestly think that the cure to bullies, put them in the gym. They'll learn respect. You know, they'll learn to be humble. Um, they'll know how to defend themselves if they're being bullied. You could go to a gym and you have the geekiest, smallest looking kid you've ever mm. seen and he'll absolutely destroy the bully. I don't know what fights you've seen, but you've probably seen the worst bits. You know, <laughs> They've probably given you a clip and said, this is the most barbaric scene you'll ever see. Whereas 
you know, it's not always like that. But like, because I, I just find, I remember the other day I was on the bus and there was a woman watching a fight on her phone and she kept playing it over and over again. And for me, I was just like, I wonder what, like, what's in your mind? How do you find this satisfying? Mm. So, so, you know, I can understand, like, if you are on the street, you've got to defend yourself, blah, blah. You're choosing to do this. You're choosing to watch this thing that looks bloodthirsty. I don't watch much fighting at all. Oh, really? No, I can't, I can't tell you the last time I actually watched a full fight out of enjoyment. And what's your aim when you're in that fight? Like, what's your... I know it's to win, but by what means...? I'd say to overcome the obstacle that's in front of me which is another man. You know, we're going at a one-on-one -on -one sport. My objective is to beat you. His objective is to beat me. Um, and if you see blood coming out of him? I guess you know you're on the right path, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> um, it's like chess, right? If, you, if I show you a ball game of chess and we're playing, you have no idea how to play it. Yeah. You're going to think, I ain't got a clue what you're doing. Yeah. It doesn't look fun. I don't want any part of that. Right. Whereas if I show you, okay, you move this piece and this piece, and you think, oh, okay, there's more there's to some, it. There's something yeah, in Yeah, you this. actually need to be quite intelligent to do this. You right, know, there's a right. lot more to it than just a kind of a physical fist fight. Mm. Um, yeah, I guarantee you would change your mind a little bit on it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you might not be a, a fan, you know, I might not. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. I keep an open mind. You might I'm tune, struggling You might on this tune one. into my <laughs> next fight. You might, <laughs> yeah. you might watch it. Um, okay. If a fighter beats me in a certain way, I think. Respect. Well done, well done. I have a lot of respect for that because I know what you just did. Right. If uh, one of my teammates gets a, a cool submission on me or does something really spectacular, you know, I respect that and I'm like, okay, you know, I can... And what would be deemed as spectacular? Uh, like a set move, let's say, or so a like technique. Like, like, like what? Like that no, that, that would never work, <laughs> you know, that would never work. But yeah, if... Or if like really if battering you in your head. I don't know, say, oh yeah, say cool. uh, a takedown. Say me and my opponent were sparring, so we start standing up and he manages to get me to the floor with a really good takedown, because it's a lot harder to get someone to the floor, obviously, once you're trained. I think, okay, I can appreciate that. You know, I know how skillful that was, let's say, that he just done. Um, right. And I guess, again, it's like maybe dancing. You know, you can appreciate what's really skillful. I probably right. couldn't. I'd just think, okay, that looks just as good as that. Or, um, you know, if you're a, a builder, you might be able to appreciate the art work mm -hmm. of building a house. I, I don't know, but, you um, yeah, the with me, I know. Conscious, did you think, yeah, respect? No, I've never been knocked out unconscious. Oh, right. No, okay. so um, I might not think that straight away, but yeah, after a while, I think, you that think was, he got me with a good respect. shot. Respect. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Not straight away, though. <laughs> I might be a little bit hurt straight away. Yeah, okay. I'm shocked that you're such a nice person. I'm mm -hmm. shocked that Thank you're you. soulful. <laughs> I'm shocked that you said, you use words like God. <laughs> yeah. We actually have more in common than I thought we would have, mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to be honest. You're going to be training soon. <laughs> You're going to come down to the gym, guarantee it. <laughs> that would really be something. You're going to be competing in two years' time. I don't think maybe, so, Maybe, maybe. No. Back, but no. So, um, I, I'm shocked by the amount, especially from that first discussion, I'm shocked by the amount we have mm. in common, mm -hmm. really. I'm going to keep an open mind that there is some art in there. Mm -hmm. I, I've watched that and thought, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There is no, uh, and I love hey, art. Hey, that's, that's fair, know. that's fair. You but can I, you know, you said that there's dancing in there. Well, I, I think... Got to have, got to have rhythm. Got to have rhythm. Got to have rhythm. <laughs> I think I'm going to try and add a couple more minutes onto my usual watching. I still feel that it's bloodthirsty. I do worry about the message that's been put out there mm -hmm. because I appreciate that Nathaniel has control and has art behind it and discipline behind it. But like you said, you look at the audience and they're crazy. You know, people are less and less connected with their soul, really. And that's a really big thing for me. And I do question how this um, adds to the nightmares that are out there. And I worry about the children. And I didn't realise how many different art forms there is in there. So I've shifted a little bit, mm -hmm. Nathaniel. But you do think that kids should be trained in defending themselves? But not like that. Okay, so that's the competition side. You don't like the competition, but you do like the martial arts. Yes, yes, all that's time. You appreciate that. Cool. You'd think, yes. okay, that's that's good. I think yes. kids. Yeah, a bit of kung fu, <laughs> and I'm good with that. Perfect. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you head over to jockofuel.com, by the way. They're our OG partners. And yeah, you get 10% off when you use the code MMA on point. So use it, you sandwich.